From the newsroom at news.com.au. G'day, I'm Andrew Bucklow. And I'm Lexi Cartwright. And this is the latest from the newsroom. It's Thursday, the 22nd of April. To New South Wales, several people who could have been exposed to COVID-19 in a Sydney quarantine hotel have already travelled interstate. Three return travellers from two families tested positive for the South African strain late in their hotel quarantine periods. They had both been staying on the 10th floor at the McCure Hotel in the Sydney CBD. So contact tracers are now working to contact all 40 people who were staying on the same level at the same time. Some of whom are now interstate. New South Wales Chief Medical Officer Kerry Chance said there was not yet a definitive source of transmission. Under certain circumstances, um, if there are um, you know, additional gaps in doors that are not recognised, there can be under unique circumstances air flows. We're further understanding this, but, but clearly there's been a lot of um, initiatives taken, such as making sure that all door seals are, are tight, um, that we're obviously doing things around minimising door openings and closings. In other news, the tragic death of a nine-month-old girl and her father at a South Australian tourist hotspot has been ruled a murder-suicide. Police were called to the Whispering Wall in Williamstown yesterday after witnesses reported seeing a man with an infant jump off the 36-metre high wall. When emergency services arrived, they found a deceased man and the unresponsive child who died despite the efforts of the public and paramedic. And just a reminder, if you need help, you can call Lifeline on 13 11 14. To sport now, in less than five months after captaining Australia for the first time, Matthew Wade is reportedly set to lose his national contract. It's rumoured Wade won't feature in Cricket Australia's list of contracted players for the upcoming season. It comes after a pretty lean summer with the bat for the 33-year-old. He failed to score more than 50 in any of his 14 most recent test innings. Alrighty, to showbiz news and fans have lashed out at Ellen DeGeneres after she admitted she was under the influence the night she drove Portia de Rossi to hospital. Oh, Ellen. Mm, so Portia had to have an emergency appendectomy last month. Here's what Ellen told talk show host Jimmy Kimmel. Chelsea Handler to- told me about these like weed drinks. They're called Can, C-A-N-N. Oh. And they have CBD or T- TH. I don't know what the good thing is. But I drank one and I didn't feel anything. And I drank, so I drank three. And then I took two like melatonin sleep pills. And I'm laying in bed and I realize she's not in bed. And I, she's moaning. I get out of a, a bed and she's on the ground on all fours. I rushed her to the emergency room and uh, they, her you entire... You drove her yourself? I did. I mean, I kicked in like my adrenaline was like, because I just had to rush her there. So it's probably not safe. I shouldn't be saying any of this. I was... <laughs> <laughs> Ellen's confession has attracted backlash from social media. Media users who branded her careless for driving after consuming the drinks. And finally, a TV prank show from Iraq has sparked outrage after it featured celebrities being kidnapped by fake jihadists who then strapped fake suicide vests to the stars. Oh, my word. Yeah, one of the female celebrities was so scared that she actually passed out. So I reckon you could expect a couple of lawsuits coming out of that show. And just a reminder, if you want the chance to win $1,000, play our daily news quiz at news.com.au forward slash quiz and that cash could be yours. That's it from the newsroom. We'll have another update tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Your headlines from news.com.au.